This is Justin Bradstreet and I'm a student here at Big Sky High School. I'd like to welcome you to the Spring Festival. The festival is a showcase of students' talents and achievements. You can meet the students and teachers and see performances and displays from every area. A few of these are dance, poetry readings, science demonstrations, sports videos, metal fabrications, and a World War II museum. The Spring Festival is Thursday, April 27th, 7 to 9 p.m. Everyone in the community is welcome. We hope to see you there.
This next, this next skit we're going to introduce is the Martian Chronicles. This is very interesting. I narrate it, but it is set in to some messed up music. I have no idea what it is. But that's going to be aired tonight and uh, on the 30th at 7.30. I think you should watch it. Take alien invasion and turn it around so humans are the aliens. This behalf and humorous production is about <clears throat> one culture trying to change another. This production shows a variety of sounds and light that are <clears throat> interesting to the ear and the eye. Sit back and enjoy as we journey to the planet Mars. this production of Martian Chronicles at Big Sky High School, Tuesday, March 28th at 7.30, and Thursday, March 30th at 7.30. The cost, students, $2.50, adults, $3.50. This is your last chance to journey to other planets. Welcome to River Ecology. This program seeks to educate the public about the ecology of the Bitterroot and Clark Fork rivers. Riparian areas will be the focus of our segment today. Riparian areas are defined as those areas adjacent to rivers whose trees and shrubs require continuously moist soil. Riparian areas tend to be wetter than upland areas because rivers tend to recharge the groundwater around them. Riparian areas serve a variety of important purposes. 
The roots of trees, shrubs, and grasses help filter pollutants in the soil. Overhanging branches shade the water, lowering water temperatures and maintaining high levels of dissolved oxygen. Many fish species need these high oxygen levels. Leaves fall into the water and create a diverse habitat of their own. Decomposing bacteria rapidly cover leaf surfaces, breaking the leaf down and also providing a rich source of food for microorganisms and aquatic insects. These in turn are eaten by fish. The plants also serve as a dry environment for insects changing from their aquatic stage to their winged adult stage. Fallen trees create waterfalls, which also stirs more oxygen into the water. The long roots of riparian plants help keep soil in place, so it does not erode into the river and suffocate fish eggs. Riparian areas are also valuable habitat for a variety of animal species, including beavers, deer, ducks, muskrats, and many species of birds. Examples of riparian plants include mountain ash with its bright red berries, Wax wings in huge flocks feed on these throughout the winter. Bears also love this very, very treat. Red oyster dogwood is another important riparian shrub, which gets heavily browsed by deer and elk in the winter. Last is mountain maple with its distinctive opposite stem structure. Mountain maple is another browse species. Riparian vegetation is destroyed in numerous ways. Some of them are due to nature, but most are due to humans. Many farms and ranches lie along rivers. It is very convenient for farmers because their cattle can drink from the river, but it is not beneficial for the riparian plants. Cows, as they walk up to the river's edge, trample the plants. Day after day, the cows use the same watering hole, fatally damaging the plants. Cows can also wipe out all the plants by eating them especially willows and woody vegetation. When farmers plant crops, they till all the soil, killing or uprooting all existing plants to provide more farmland. All this can be avoided by leaving a thin stretch of land along the river containing riparian vegetation. The changing of the river can also affect plants. For example, as a river changes its course over time, cottonwoods can be left behind. Without a water source, they can no, no longer live. Another source of riparian plant destruction comes from development. Whether it's people clearing land to build houses, restaurants striving for a picturesque view, or factories fighting for an optimum location. In short, there are many ways to destroy riparian vegetation, but we must try to protect these very important plants. This video was produced by Big Sky students to inform the public about land use planning and the pros and cons of development in Missoula Valley. In this study, we will show the exponential growth in world population and its effects on Missoula. We will also show some calculated projections to the year 2200. This is a graph showing the increase in world population from 1650 to 2001. As you can see, the population took off at about the year 1900 and has been growing ever since. And with this increase, everything that is associated with it increased too. For example, pollution, cars, and natural resources. This shows the sigma pattern of population growth and a estimated plateau at about 10.5 billion. From these figures, you can see what the worldwide growth will be at the turn of the century. 
This graph shows the population increasing since the 1890s. In the 1930s, you can see a decrease in Missoula's population during the Depression. The Bureau of Defense has researched and projected Missoula's population from 1992 to the year 2012 to increase about 50,000 people. I think the population around everywhere is really growing, but I think it's kind of sad that it's growing in Missoula so rapidly because um, Right now, Missoula is such a great community, and everyone kind of knows everyone, and it's pretty safe to live here. So hopefully, with the population growing, it won't really increase too much so that it's not fun to live here anymore. <laughs> I feel about the population increase in 43. I like it. We have a beautiful city. I think we increase probably almost half or more. And we have a lot more new buildings. We have a new hospital. We have two new hospitals. We have nursing homes. We have all the shopping malls. And we have a lot more business. And we have a lot more people becoming more active and having more businesses in Missoula. And more more uh, fun things. Uh, Here is a view of Missoula Valley and how it's been increasing since the late 60s. You can see where new development areas are going up. How do you feel about the population increasing in Missoula County? Development sites have been coming up all around Missoula County, all the way from the new hotel in Lolo to Walmart to Costco on the outskirts of Missoula. Not only have businesses been going up quickly, but so have homes. There have been developments around places like Grant Creek, L Rattlesnake area, Elmar Estates, and yes, even Lolo. Development new houses and businesses not only affects the humans in Missoula, but also affects the animals. And if houses go up in the habitat of an animal, either has to move from the area or live with it around the humans. Because of development in Missoula, birds, squirrels, and other animals are forced to, to live among the humans or face possible death because of it. Places like these have wildlife and other things around it and, and are moving into areas that are too close to the mountains and should be concentrated more in the city. We need developers to develop more in the city and instead of the outskirts around the trees and the mountains and all the, and the, and the rivers. And, there are, there are also many areas that are, that are bad, bad for development, like in riparian areas, wilderness. We like these places so we keep them undeveloped. So we should keep them undeveloped. I'm Laura Coulter and I'm the vocational coordinator here at Big Sky High School. The purpose and goal of our program is to place students in a job setting where they will be able to learn job skills in order to be competitive in the job market. In our vocational prep one program, they, we usually place sophomores on campus doing various types of jobs. In our voc prep two program, Juniors and seniors will be placed off campus in various job settings. All of our vocational students do receive a monthly paycheck.
to welcome you everyone to the uh, second of the year airy sponsored reading here at Hunter Bay and uh, I like to uh, just Hunter Bay has done us a great favor by having us you know letting us have the reading here without charging us anything at all so it'd be a great help to everyone if you purchase coffee or something in order to show you know your thanks for letting us do this here for free and Mr. Junkard is the man responsible for letting us have it here Mr. Junkard And without further ado, we'll start out. And our first reader is Ben Malur. Okay, I'm going to be reading a poem, and it's entitled Crappy Winter. Local submarine farmers juggle blocks of solid redwood, and I can't know what I think I do, because I like the rain in fall because it's snow in winter. And you know that dumb guys finish last and warm, dry winters really suck. So interesting is my love of corrupting youth, and society just doesn't get it. We kill because we've lost the ability to feel, they scream. But we still find it easy to eat Wheaties because we want to be champions. And you know what I think of miners who eat coal without flossing and waxing their cars that they drive to the mall to buy euros eaten with disgustingly dirty hands and I get pissed cause there's mud all over the floor and you shoot beavers for hats and I eat beef for the simplicity or maybe we can just go skydiving without shoots and ants can carry away our crumbs to underneath my house where they can get in through the cracked foundation because the builder screwed up and you just can't fix it just like you can't go home again or so they say and what they say goes because they're in charge. And sometimes they tear apart our lives for fun and ruin our determination to climb higher. And slushy wet roads have stopped because we try to reach the snow, but we can't. And the submarine farmers can't learn to sing because they drop their blocks of wood. Thanks. Um, this poem's a lot more serious than my other ones, and because I'm usually pretty laid back about it. But this one's about something that I think we all deal with. But girls have a, a problem, a, a real. Um, they usually have a more of a problem with it, and that's self-consciousness and being real critical of yourself mentally and emotionally. And um, it's called Portrait. I have dissected her, piece by little piece. Her mind, laugh at the stupidity, dullness of thought the black, atheistic voids. Second, her heart. Spit at the lust that festers, the selfishness of man, blue blood hardening envious arteries. Her body. Point at the deformed breast, wideness of hip, absence of muscle. Last, her face. Curse the shallow eyes, the hate that lays on lip, grayness of skin. Hold to her tightly and tell her to run. I turn from the mirror, and walk away. OK. Um, I wrote down my introduction because I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> OK. I think that all of us have a place inside ourselves that we sometimes draw into. 
Some would say it's the state of depression, some say it's the state of thoughtfulness, and others would say they don't know what it is. But somehow, in that place, we feel safer from the outside world. We feel protected from the realities of life, and we draw into ourselves for that feeling of comfort. That place inside, which can seem so dark, is what this poem is about. It's titled, The, Dark the Darkness I Portray. Ah, <coughs> uh, there it is again, that sweet, sharp, vi sharp vibration that punctures through my infinite self, that self which is not physical, nor is it spiritual. It's more a self which hasn't been fully discovered yet, a self which holds a great tunnel that captures darkness and treasures it in memory. I'm walking, slowly, feeling about for the walls, but there is only my happiness that boxes these evils in, and I like it. I actually enjoy visiting this dreary place, this place which carries so much of me. My energy is directed into it violently. I live by that degree. I know I'll never see the end. I know the walls will not collapse. I only know I'm moving, slowly, down this hole. My pleasureness in being here frightens me a bit. Will my walls ever be cemented, or will I let them fall? I dread not being felt for. I want them all to see that I can understand them. That's just natural me. Tomorrow's night is just another, and this poem is a poem for a poem. These cracks all stare at me, and I smile at the silence. The surface is composed and faceless, and th another clown without a smile. But I will, but wander I shall do, and I shall haunt my very soul. The pillars only stand there. Their entertainment is beyond compare. My laughing freak show is only for display. The darkness I portray. On the upper regions of northern Maine, along the southern border of Canada, two friends had planned a journey to a mysterious lake in which they've heard tales of the legendary ghost that ruled the lake. When we were walking up the game trail, the smell of moss and pine trees filled the air with an overtaking aroma. Hey Mercedes, look at this grave. Hey, that's weird. As we walked over to it, we were intrigued by the carving in the stone. It looked as if it was very old because it was covered with dust and dirt. It read R.I.P. Realize A.R.L. We couldn't exactly see what the name was. It looked like some of it was scratched off. Wow. That's weird. I wonder that cab over here. As we walked over to the window of the cabin and looked inside, we were amazed at how clean and neat it was. Have you ever gone to a prom? 
What would you do if you were going to go? Many people feel that it would take a lot of preparation and time. Not true. Preparing for a prom is almost as simple as asking the date you're going with. When you go to rent a tuxedo or dress, there's really no preparation necessary. Most stores have trained professionals to help fit you. They can pick out what you want, resize it to fit you exactly, and then send you on your way. Everything you need comes with the rental. The shoes, belt, t-shirts, everything. Many places will even go so far as to match your outfit with the person you are going with. I asked several Big Sky students about the prom. Although there were negative responses, most students felt pretty good about the prom. Yeah, actually I am. How come? Mm, I like hanging out with people. I think it's fun. Didn't have enough money, didn't have the guts to ask anybody. Well, the fact that on my t-shirt here it says we're 1994 football state champions, I mean, that's rad. <laughs> but not only that, also there's like a lot of good people in Big Sky. Not only students, but teachers as well. I think there's a couple of cool ones out there. There's a lot that makes, you know, the teacher crowd look bad, but there's always going to be a couple of great teachers that stand out. Like who? Mm, I can think back to um, sophomore and junior year, Sarah Grand Prix, one of the neatest ladies I ever met. Where yeah. are you party at? I mean, I dress up in a fancy dress so you can just sit there and basically do nothing. Many people would like to go to the prom. Unfortunately, not everyone can. It takes a date and it also takes a lot of guts. I'm Noah S. Patton. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Some people will work things out and some just don't know how to change. Let's don't wait till the water runs dry. We might watch our whole lives pass us by. Let's don't wait till the water runs dry. We'll make the biggest mistake of our lives. Don't do it, baby. They can see the tears in our eyes. <laughs> but we didn't know the pain that lies deep in our hearts. <laughs> but baby, that's the pain we can't hide. Cause everybody knows that we're both torn apart. Some people things out and some just don't know how to change. Let's go way till the water runs dry. We might watch our whole lives pass us by. Let's go way till the water runs dry. We make the biggest mistake of our lives. Most people wouldn't argue to consider this a piece of art. This, on the other hand, may be a bit more controversial. Some consider graffiti art, some people don't. Some people would consider graffiti an art, but the problem starts when graffiti artists take their art from the canvas and paint it on public property. Graffiti around Missoula is becoming more and more common every day. We took our cameras on the street to show you just how big a problem this is becoming in Missoula.
be definitely the depot. Those were pretty cool stories, weren't they, Mike? What do you think of them? Yeah, they were pretty good. They were. They were I pretty good. They did pretty good job. If I if I say so myself, yeah, I thought they were pretty swell. What should we do now, Mike? I have no idea what we should do now. Let's shake the magic tree. See what comes out. Good Go idea, ahead, Mike. I'll shake the magic tree. <laughs> oh my gosh! How's it going, mate? It's Service the Head Berry. I got a snake, mate. Sarvis, how's it going? Oh, pretty good, man. Just chilling. We, we'd like to ask you a couple of questions, Yeah, we, Sarvis. we should ask you a couple of questions as long as you're here. How come you're only ahead? Genetic makeup, man. <laughs> wow. Is this from inbreeding or something? <laughs> My mom found me under a rock. That's good. So tell me, Sarvis. I'm related to face. Face? Yeah. That's cool. Okay, uh, Service. So, how does it feel to just just be ahead? Pretty light headed. Wow. We and like we like to know where you come from first. Yeah. I came under a rock, man. You came from under a rock. Yeah. What country, though? Pittsburgh. France. <laughs> oh, okay. And so, tell me, Service. Do you think that? Um, People discriminate against you because you're only ahead? No, because they don't talk to me. They're scared. Oh, really? And do they make you go to separate seats on the bus and different water fountains and stuff like that because you're just ahead? You know where the soup ca cases sit on the bus? That's where I sit because, you know, they, they don't they like me. They stick you up on the carry-on luggage rack? <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, geez, that's, that's terrible, Sarvis. Have you ever, haven't you ever, like, pressed charges against anybody for... Discriminating Did, yeah, against heads? Ra racial slurs no, or something? No, because I can't write. I don't got no <laughs> arms. <laughs> so how do you get places, Sarvis? I mean, how do you open doors? I float. How do you open doors? you do that with your teeth? No, I can flatten myself out and go under the crack of the door. <laughs> oh, that's cool. What enables you to flatten out like that? Don't, don't got no brains, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> We'd ask you to do that for us now, but, you know, we wouldn't. Wouldn't want to, wouldn't want you to go to any trouble for us or anything yeah. like that. So, let's see, what do you do in your spare time, Sarvis? Being only ahead and all. And Get away from me. <laughs> I annoy people. What kind of things, <laughs> what kind of things do you okay, do? Okay, Sarvis, I think, I think that's, that's, that's pretty good. We're, we're running out of time. And we, um, we really, we're running out of time. We need to introduce the next shot. This is.
In the 1993 Class AA football season, the Big Sky Eagles surprised everybody by making it to the championship game. But before the 94 season even started, they had higher expectations. Well, we thought this was going to be a real good football team. They've had great success throughout their four years in high school. We had high expectations, and um, we, we, we expected to be uh, playing for all the marbles, and we were fortunate enough to, to get ourselves in that position. Um, I think the team's expectations was to win state, probably go undefeated, but basically just win state. Even though the Eagles came into their first game of the season against Billings West with high hopes, they came out on the wrong end, losing 36 to 14. The feelings were disappointment and probably some shock and probably uh, some concern. Uh, I think not only on the part of the coaches, but also on the part of the players. As far as the reasons for it, it was one of those very difficult kind of games to analyze in terms of why we lost. Uh, we started out playing really well. We jumped ahead, 14 zip, and it looked like we were going to, you know, do a, do the do the job. And as it turned out, we didn't get it done. So uh, I, I I guess I don't know the answer to exactly exactly why why we lost that game. For the Eagles, loss against Billings West was a shock. But after that game, they put into high gear, winning six in a row in seven of the last eight games to make it to the championship game for the second straight year. Even though the Eagles lost in last year's championship game. They came into this year's game confident that they could still win. I'm a firm believer you got to feel that you can win when you when you go into a football game, and the, that's probably the only thing that we did that whole week as coaches is 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 set an atmosphere where our our young football players felt comfortable about the position they were in. I mean, they knew how to execute. They knew what the game plan was going to be. We didn't change it from the time before, and so it was a matter of believing. And I and uh, I think you could tell. In, the, in, the, in our school on Friday, that whole day, the way our kids were going to play that night. I mean, they, this place was, this place was, a, was bursting with opt optimism and positive, positive, positive vibes. And our kids from the start, from the, from the uh, pregame warm-up right on through to the gun went off, were, were really focused and really played hard. And it was, uh, it was obvious, I think, after after uh, just a few plays that, that we had a great chance. Big Sky came into the championship game prepared as their offense was rolling and their defense dominated as they won the game 39 to, to 13 for their first ever Class AA football state championship. This is Mike McCollum for MCAT News. Today I'm going to do a skit for you. This happens all the time in Missoula, but not this often. <laughs> Get my toys. Hey you! Don't skateboard there! Don't skateboard there! You're under arrest! I didn't do anything, man! I think you did. Scene two, court. <laughs> this man was trespassing. He was trespassing where he wasn't supposed to be, and he was skateboarding. But I didn't do anything, man. Your life sentence to go to Pine Hills and play with all the little boys there. No! Skateboarding is not a crime! That was my skit, just saying skateboarding is really not a crime. Hello, my name is Justin Bradstreet and I'm a student here at Big Sky High School. I'd like to welcome you to the Spring Festival. The festival is a showcase of students' talents and achievements. You can meet the students and teachers and see performances and displays from every area. A few of these are dance, poetry readings, science demonstrations, sports videos, metal fabrications, and a World War II museum. The Spring Festival is Thursday, April 27th, 7 to 9 p.m. Everyone in the community is welcome. We hope to see you there.